one. Oh my god, yeah, I'm so sorry. I was just looking at the time. Uh yeah, it's it's Sunday once again. Uh as you know, it's my favorite day of the week. Um yeah, it's just gone, I think it's just gone two o'clock. Oh no, it's one minute till two uh in the UK. And it's one minute, or maybe it's nine o'clock now in Manila. Hope some of you, my dear friends, are watching us live. Um, this week is actually very special because I've got two Ask the Jump um, episodes today. Uh, the first one is, I'm really looking forward to this because um, he's in a band. He plays drums in a band that's like massive in Manchester and all over the world as well. I mean, if you think about Manchester. Um, this is probably the biggest Manchester band, or one of the biggest, anyway. So, and I got to know of them when I was living in the UAE, and I really, really love this band. But he's here, and I found out recently that he's actually been in thirty different bands. Thirty? I couldn't believe it. It's like played in or played for thirty different bands, and he looks so young. I think he's probably just only in his 30s so <laughs> it's like, i'm really excited to find out more about all the bands that he's played in so um my dear friends please welcome kev clark of inspiral carpets hello hey. Hey. <laughs> how are you kev i'm excellent thanks how are you getting on i'm fine thank you and um i want to say thank you so much for saying yes um to us the trauma that's no really kind of you and before I actually continue, I just want to give a massive shout out to Mark Hoyle hey, of yeah. uh, Dubsax for, yeah. you know, for the connection, because it's him actually, so like, told me about you. Although I have seen you, I have seen you play uh, with Inspiral Carpets. I right. just didn't know. Yeah, I didn't right. know you. you? I'd shine. <laughs> Thank you for so like enhancing that photograph because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I was so like going to Inspiral Carpets so like Facebook page to look for a photo to add to my guest announcement post and I saw the one from Shine on there I thought I was there so I, <laughs> I was just looking at <laughs> yeah. I was looking at the sort of, like crowd and it was like that's me <laughs> like yeah. with yeah. Cam and Clint Moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, when I go to Shine On, I always try and make sure that um, I wait for the bands and so, like, in the artists and make sure that I, you know I get a photo with them. Yeah. But I think I don't know whether you were rushing out or something, but I didn't get to see uh, the band afterwards. So yeah, we, we were, were pretty much straight back there. on the tour bus after that. Yeah, we were uh, we were ready to head home. That was the last show of the year. And I think we were ready for bed. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, the one that I actually, the drummer that I got to see after your set uh, was Tom Webster, Deja Vega. Oh, yeah, I know Tom. Yeah, yeah, he's a good friend. <laughs> yeah. he's, so, he's, yeah, he's amazing. So I didn't get a photo with you, but at least I got a photo with uh, Tom Webster. So that, that's, that's good. good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. um, be um, okay, before the actual thing, uh, Joe28 just appeared and said wild turkey. With, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but yeah. <laughs> Joe's a good friend of mine, and uh, yeah, wild turkey something that we may have drank a few of the other night. That's what that is. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. And also, um, Claire Louise Hayworth, uh, she just commented, Love Kev, uh, he's amazing. So, oh, that's nice. Thank you. Yeah, Claire. Thanks for that, Claire Louise. Okay, so, um, welcome to Ask the Drummer episode 131 is all about you kev um kev clark without yeah. an e no e yeah <laughs> without an e oh, no, um no. yeah i asked you this before we came on um live and you're born and bred in manchester yeah born in gorton, Sunny gorton. gorton. Oh. wow uh that's you know i've always loved manchester ever since the smiths yeah, because I'm originally from the Philippines, but when I uh, heard about the Smiths and especially having no so miserable now and girlfriend in a yeah. coma, it just sort of like made me think Manchester. I want to go there. I mean, so <laughs> into the technicalities of Salford and Manchester being technically different cities, oh. we won't go there, but it's fine. They're a Manchester band. It's fine. They're great. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just in Greater Manchester. That would yeah, be so yeah, like, yeah. Well, yeah. So can I just ask you, um, what was your, because like I said earlier, I mean, you you seem like you're very young. Thank you. <laughs> you <laughs> am I right in thinking that you're only in your 30s? I'm 33, yeah. 33, yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that's right. That's right then. So what was your Manchester like when you were growing up? It was very different to the Manchester that we're in now. Very different. Yeah. So the area that I grew up in, in Gorton, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a, a rougher place. That I mean, you know, it still has its moments now, but it was a bit of a rougher place than it is now. Uh, yeah, it was interesting, to say the least. But, you know, when you grow up around there, you don't really know much different. You get to know everybody and, you, you know, you get on, you're all right. You're fine. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the, yeah. I thought it was, well, I was born in 90, so... That's just at like, you know, the Manchester and the rave scene and things, you know, was, was becoming huge. Uh, so I was brought up on that, you know, that was played around the house, all of those bands, all of those artists that were just played around the house. So I was born and raised on the 90s Manchester scene, which is not a bad era amazing. to be raised in, really, is it? No, that's that's amazing. Because it was like, yeah, because the Stone Roses. Because I was in the Middle East at the time, because I, I I left the Philippines in 1989. So 1990, when I found out about the Stone Roses, Happy Mondays, in Spiral Carpets, I was I was in the Middle East, and I thought it made me even more focused to go to Manchester yeah. to yeah. get there. So for you, you actually grew up in in this surroundings, in Being this kind of music of scene. Being born right in the middle of it, my mum's told me, and I. I put this in a book recently for about Rennie. Uh, my mum told me that while she was pregnant with me, she used to play the Stone Roses to me, and apparently I'd kick when I heard them. <laughs> wow. So it goes back to before I was even born, I've been a fan of those guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you talking about the one that Matt Mead? That's the book. Was it the yeah. Matt Mead book? Yeah. Oh, wow. I should I should get a copy of that. It really, because, oh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah. So are you from a musical family? Uh, massive music appreciators. Um, my dad played a bit of bass. He was he played bass when he was a teenager, and then later on down the line, I think when he was in his mid to late forties, he got another bass and he, he started playing again. And uh, we actually played a gig together once, just one gig, which oddly enough was Stone Roses covers. Strange. Oh. <laughs> and he, he was great. He was great at playing bass. But yeah, it's, it's, it's music just runs through the entire family, really. Everybody's a huge fan, and they're all banged into bands and artists. So yeah, I've been surrounded by it forever. Yeah. Um, what got you into drumming, though? Because if your dad's a bass player, didn't you want to sort of, like follow him and become a bass player yourself? You think, wouldn't you? But I've, I've got yeah. a theory. That, I've got a theory that you don't choose your instrument. Your instrument chooses you. You know, it's a bit like it's a bit like a Harry Potter reference. You know, the one chooses you kind of thing. And it, apparently when I was about five or six, mum and yeah. dad got me a tiny little toy Argos drum kit. And it, that's that's all I ever wanted. I was on that all the time, trying to put a beat together. And apparently I used to play along to uh, Changing Man by Paul Weller. And my dad said, oh, oh. you can play that better than me. <laughs> Which you know, oh. <laughs> so I think it was when I was about five or six, but I properly got into playing when I was in year nine in high school. And there was already a band that existed. And I yeah. sort of, I was the guy that hung around with the band, you know, because these guys are pretty cool, outcasty. I like these guys. And I'd be like in the rehearsal room with them, like it's lunchtime or something. Yeah. And eventually they, they said to me, like, oh, why don't you try and do, can you do this beat? And they beatboxed something to me. I said, can you do this beat? I said, I, I think I can do that. So I got on the kit and tried it. And they went, right, you're the drummer. Oh, so, God. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, you just reminded me of a joke there because Mike Joyce said it. <laughs> oh. It's like, what, what, what do you call a guy who hangs around with bun? <laughs> is a drummer. Well, that, that was exactly me then. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> so is it safe to say that that was your first band? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, they were called Slife. Yeah, Slife. That's an interesting thing. Oh. All right, and... So did you uh, do any gigs in, or recording or anything, yeah? Um, the only recordings we did, I think, were on like just a tape deck, you know, just pressing record in the room, as, as far as, as I remember anyway. But yeah, we, we played a few gigs. I remember playing at, um, at Salford, on the Salford Keys there. I remember we played yeah. in uh, 
oh, I forget the name of the park. We, we did some park like festival thing. You know, it's nothing huge, just you know, small scale. But yeah, we, we did a few yeah. gigs. It was, it was a load of fun. In oh, fact, wow. I'm still in contact with those boys because two, the two the two lads that I was in that band with that yeah. I went to school with, we ended up forming another band in about 2014 called To Kill a Circus. And we wrote some new songs then, obviously, as older people who'd, you know, gotten more mature and got better at instruments. And yeah, that was yeah. incredible band to be in. Oh, wow. But um, so when you started, did you actually have some drumming lessons or were you self-taught? No, I had... Uh, yeah. I, to start off with, I, I was given a pair of drumsticks by a friend of mine, Richard, and I'd just go home and I used to, I'd go, I'd watch Kerrang! at night and I'd get a blank VHS and the songs that came on that I liked, I used to record them and then I'd yeah. take that up to bed and before bed every night, I'd get the sticks out and I'd tap along to this Kerrang! video that I'd recorded and that was for <laughs> six months and then luckily my gran got me my first drum kit. So once I got that first drum kit, my mum... I don't know why she did this, but she allowed me to set it up in the living room. So, all right, here we go. You know, um, so I what about CDs and I just worked yeah. through CDs, listen to them. What are they playing? Replicate what they're playing. And that was my tutor. And what about the neighbors? Were they happy? <laughs> um, mixed results. Mixed <laughs> results on that one. We had some questions, but generally, you know, I got away with it, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, you mentioned the two so like bands that you were in already. Because um, on your Facebook uh, um, profile, you said that you're a session drummer. Yeah. So, um, and maybe that's the reason why you've had so like 30 bands. You know, so like you played in or played for um, yeah. 30 bands. I remember when um, Stephen Morris um, was on Astro Drummer, he said that he wanted to be a session drummer because I think there's more work. As a, as a session drummer. It can be. It's interesting, though, because, I mean, it, he knows the dynamic of his band, doesn't he? He knows where he stands. He knows what's going yeah. on. And there's a lot of sort of, you know, there's comfort in that. When you're working with lots of different bands, you've got to imagine there's lots of different personalities. There's, you know, potentially sometimes there's egos flying around, though luckily I've not had a massive amount of experience with that. It, yeah, it, it can be very interesting. But I, I used to really relish it. You know, there was, there was a point, I'd say about 10, maybe yeah, 10 years ago, something like that, maybe a bit longer. I was in about five bands at the same time. At the same time? Whoa. So I'd Monday night, I'd be with this one. Tuesday night, I'm with these guys. Then, you know, it, it was crazy, but I loved it. You know, it keeps you matching. Yeah. yeah. Well, Aiden wrote my sound tech, or our sound tech, he, um, he said it's great sound in pictures. So that's, that's good. That's oh, very good. Yeah. So we're, we're going to talk about all these uh, bands that you were in, oh, okay. um, starting with Dob Sax. Because oh. we, you know, we mentioned that Mark Hoyle, he's the one who actually so like you know, um, told me about you and gave me your email address. So um, thank you so much for that, Mark Hoyle. Um, so when did you become their drummer? So this would have been 2013, I think, if I remember rightly, around the September-ish of 2013. I hope I'm remembering that right. Um, and I was playing for some other bands at the time. I think I was, I was, I'd just left a band called Gabriel's Wish, another Manchester band. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a mutual friend of ours that said, oh, Dub Sex are looking for a drummer. Would you be up for doing it? Yeah, let's go, yeah. So uh, we went to, went to a rehearsal that was down in Miles Platin, I think, in, a, in an old yeah. mill in Miles Platin. And uh, yeah, just turned up and I, I knew Swerve really well, but I wasn't as familiar with everything else in terms of playing it. But yeah, I remember yeah. we went through Swerve and that sounded great. And then it just progressed from there. I did rehearsals. And then we did the first show on October 31st, 2013 at the Ruby Lounge in Manchester, which I don't think is there anymore, is it? Yeah, no, it's gone. That's a shame because I love that venue. It was great. That's really, yeah, yeah, it's a great yeah. venue. But yeah, yeah that's, that's, where, that's where that started for us. I, I think there's, there's still a little bit of footage here and there of that, that first gig with dub sex. Yeah, we, we just got on great ever since, you know, me and Mark and Kathy, you know, we, we've stayed friends for a long time. I saw Kathy recently. Mark's coming around mm -hmm. to my house next week. So, yeah, we've stayed friends forever. Yeah, but you didn't know Mark Hoyle at the time because I believe you're best friends. You're best friends now, but you didn't know him at the time. I wasn't as I knew of the band, but I didn't know Mark personally, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Joe Twenty Eight just said the R.I.P. Ruby Lounge. So yeah, yeah. sadly, yeah. you know, sad, but uh, yeah, it's it's gone. Um, 
Yeah, because he's recently done uh, a gig himself, Mark Coyle. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna go to that one, but uh, my baba was around, so I thought, yeah. you know, family time. <laughs> well, I have the invite to that. It's, it's his, uh, it's his other project, Spirit Level. Which, if anybody who's listening who hasn't heard of that, honestly, go and check out Spirit Level. It is incredible. It's, it's Mark sort of doing spoken word, but with some visuals and some soundscapes by his partner Kelly. Unbelievable. Yeah. Definitely, definitely worth checking out. But yeah, I was, was going to be down there myself, but I ended up doing a radio interview that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah are you involved in uh, mark's spirit level or um not, not directly no no yeah. i'm more of just a huge huge fan yeah 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 hopefully he'll do another gig in there because i would really like to sort of, like see him live as well yeah, yeah, um absolutely. yeah well the next band that i wanted to ask you is oscar's drum because i know this band I saw them in um, 2017 in London at the Lexington, I think at the Lexington, because they supported the railway children. I was looking at, I was looking at the photos uh, this morning. You won't see me uh, in that one. You, no, you won't. <laughs> I'd left by then. Yeah, I left 2016 from Oscar's drum, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, because I thought there's no drummer there. So. <laughs> yeah, so I did before that. So I think we did... I think we did Manchester Academy 2 supporting the Chameleons. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's what we did. Yeah. Right. That was with um, Patrick Fitzgerald. Was the Patrick, front yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because Patrick Fitzgerald, yeah, he's in the Kitchens of Distinction as well. He's, yeah. he's, yeah. Yeah, he's quite good. I don't know what he's doing now, but I only saw Oscar's drum once. Right. And then I've not heard of them again. So yeah, I don't know if they carried on, which is a shame because, yes, like I say, yeah. Patrick's an incredible talent. You know, he's brilliant. But I don't know what he's up to these days. I've not really spoken to him since those days, really. So how did you get into that? How, how did you get into Oscar's drum? Uh, so that came from Eve, Eve Altana, who was playing guitar and was like yeah. writing the songs in Oscar's drum. Uh, yeah. I was already associated with Eve from way back in about 20... 12 when we recorded the Gab's Wish album, Hypnagogic. Um, so I knew him for a while uh, and then we were working together on some things and then he, he was bringing me in to do something with the Chameleons and it's just sort of off the back of that that he yeah. sort of said, oh, there's this other band as well that we could do with the drummer for. Do you want to come and do this? So, yeah, I got involved <clears> with that. I think it also had, uh, if I remember rightly, I'm sure Danny was in that band as well who also plays for Chameleons. Yeah, yeah. Well, um... How old were you when, when you were sort of like doing this? It must be like really young. Uh, and they're all like connected, it seems. Because uh, <laughs> you were also in Chameleon's Vox, I believe. Very, very briefly. Very briefly, yeah. 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 So that would have been, again, that was 2013, so I'd have been 23. Yeah. Because, again, I saw Chameleon's Vox at the Academy. And I looked at the photos. It wasn't you who was playing the drums then. I think yeah. it was in uh, 20, 2014. Yeah, yeah. I just did a very short hit. It was, uh, I think it was the Ruby Lounge gig. I did a oh, short see. hit there. But yeah, yeah. I didn't do anything long with them. But yeah, it was, uh, it was fun being in the rehearsals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love Mark Burgess. And I believe he's coming, he's coming, he's going to the Philippines uh, soon with the rest of the band so right. my Filipino friends you have to sort of like keep an eye out for that and I think tickets are already on sale so go and see the chameleons in the in Manila um again at the time because I didn't know who the drummer was I don't think I uh, in 2014 I don't think I got a photo with the drummer but the one that I remember having a photo with after that gig was Paul Keo. oh my <laughs> mate oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a belter, I love him. He's really, really lovely. He's a really lovely guy. So, um, yeah. Well, you mentioned To Kill a Circus. Yeah. Um, so that's um, from your very first band. Yeah. Um, I so I, like looked it up on Discogs and they weren't there. So you didn't do any recording or you, you didn't did. release them? Did. There was an EP, but I don't think it's available online anymore. That's the thing. I might have to oh, re-upload it onto the you know the publishing site or something. But we, we didn't we made a four track EP. In fact, yeah. it's, it's good that you've brought that up to me because I wasn't aware that it, it had come down actually. I thought it was still going, but yeah, I must have to re-upload it. But it, there yeah. is uh, there's four tracks out there, but obviously as a band, we wrote a lot more than four tracks. And I think our best work is still only existing in, you know, the heads of us four. 
Yeah. It takes one day to maybe get those recorded and do some other things, but you know, it's it's easier said than done, isn't it? You know, we're all grown adults. Yeah, We've of course. Today. It's it's difficult, but yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely a lot of material there that I think people should hear. Well, there is a Facebook page. Yeah. And I saw photos of you. No, no, no. Oh, he's definitely not. Yeah. Oh, YouTube. You'll be able to find the tracks on YouTube. I'm sure we uploaded them a long time ago. All Just right. Keep you on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And uh, apparently, um, there's also um, it's like a football sort of like card that I saw. And you said that that's one of your that's their best gig ever. Is it to kill a circus gig? Absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean. To that point, there was something that was maybe crept just above that last year, just tiny by a hair <laughs> above that. But that that gig, that was uh, that was actually the first gig of To Kill a Circus. That would have been, I think, 2014, July 18th, going off memory. Um, yeah. yeah, we did a launch gig at Gulliver's on Oldham Street. Oh, right, we, yeah. We'd invited loads of people down. It was like a private gig, if that makes sense. It was invite only. And we got everybody down, friends, family, and we just played for about an hour. All these songs yeah. that we've been writing that everyone was curious about. And the, the vibe in that room was incredible. It was an amazing night. Yeah. You mentioned that you're still in touch with them, but are they still playing or are you? Um, or... They didn't play sort of, well, the, the guitarist and bass player, JD and Tom, they sort of, they, they play at home a little bit now, but they're not really active in, in bands, which is a shame because they're both phenomenal players. And I'm going to try and get them to do something else yeah <laughs> um, the singer elmo elmo ashall kelly fantastic singer solo artist you'll see him all around manchester he does loads of open mic nights and stuff but he's, he's in a band at the moment who i'm sorry elmo the name is the name has slipped oh, my mind but he is in a band at the moment you can just search him up online you'll find it and he's uh what's he's his name problems. just elmo ashall kelly give him a search oh. and it'll come up okay all right um Next one is uh, these are only the bands that I actually have managed to sort of like see online. I'm sure there are more of them. In but the next... for this, I might have dug out a list. I don't think you can see it, but there is a list. Oh, I can't see <laughs> it. Just to remind myself. Well, yeah, well, the other one is Dead Objectives. I mean, Dead Objectives, they're actually on Discogs. Yeah. And they've done quite a lot, they've released quite a lot of sort of like material. So um, when were you part of it? When were you the drummer in uh, Dead Objectives? I'm going to say 2015, maybe into 2016, roughly. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go with that. So that came about with, um, it was essentially through Dubsex. So the sound engineer that Dubsex use, uh, it's called Dave Rat. We call him Rat. Um, he formed that band with his friend Tim. And he, he was writing the you know the songs there and he, he said do you mind coming and doing some punk drums for us said, well, absolutely you know i love punk my dad was a big punk back in the day so yeah, yeah. Like that stuff. let's go so yeah we went down to rehearsal room played along we're like yep yeah, let's do some stuff so we ended up recording i think we recorded a little ep together and that oh, was lots nice. of fun great lads loads of fun and sally as yeah. well i can't forget sally because i've got to sort of like say um at the moment I couldn't find your name on Discogs because that's where I normally sort like go to when I wanted to sort like first, you know, like uh, research and sort like see yeah. what they've done in the bands that they've played in. Um, currently, there's no Kev Clark there. <laughs> there won't be either. Won't be. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully soon. Um, if I an album. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you about sort like, the the band that you're in now so hopefully there'll be like a new material coming soon um but the you mentioned gabriel's wish earlier um i only became aware of this band after i found the seven inch split which is like gabriel's wish and kill laura right and yeah. i didn't know about gabriel's wish but i know about kill laura yeah. that's jane weaver isn't it so yeah with Jane Weaver's man. So um, I believe you're also a, a vinyl collector, a record yeah. collector. It's, it's a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah. I've, got, I've got the spirals to thank for that. You know, every time we rock up to a new town, it's right, where's the vinyl shop? Where's the record shop? It's become an issue. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> know. It just so like they multiply it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Tell me about it. Yes, yeah, so do you have that one? 
this is the seven inch split of Gabriel's wish and I don't, kill all. Um, when I was rehearsing with them, so I joined them towards the end of 2011. And as I was in rehearsals with them, um, I think it was Steve, the guitarist, Steve Bond. Yeah. He gave me uh, a copy of the, I think, the Manchester Suite. I think it was a 12 inch version of the Manchester Suite. So I've got that. Yeah, I've yeah. Got any other stuff of theirs on vinyl? Yeah, I was just sort of like thinking one of the great things about this, especially for me, because I love all these secondhand records, and it's just great for discovering bands that you missed out on the first time. And then you, yeah. cause you see the sleeve, and it's like, oh, yeah, they look like an interesting band. Yeah. And then yeah. you, so, are, is it the same for you, or are you more into the modern ones, the sort of like current bands? It's a mix for me. It's a huge mix. So. I'll, I'll often my sort of internal justification for buying an album is I want I want to buy something that if I were to pass this record collection on to somebody else after I'm gone I want this yeah. record collection to sort of define roughly who I was that's my thing so I'll, I'll buy something if I think yeah that's that's part of my identity that thing that that's oh, kind right. of it. so it's you know sometimes I'll I'll buy things that you know I've already had for years or I've had in other forms just to make sure it's in the collection or other times if it's something new i'll go and grab you know whatever it is that's just come out yeah, yeah that, that's my justification for it which is very different to graham's justification from in spirals whereas you know he'll buy the entire record shop if he could and just store it in his lock. <laughs> do you know that's really good because i was sort of like hey you made me think now that if maybe if someone sort of like sees my record collection maybe some of them will think that Gosh, she's got awful taste. <laughs> uh, uh, you have to have a clear out. <laughs> 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 all the <laughs> right, well, right, going back to the bands that you played in, another one that I found is Hollow Child. Uh, yeah. Well, I, right, I can't find anything, any information about Hollow Child. So. Oh, really? Oh, well, we've got uh, this, this social media profiles for them. We've released an album, which should be on all streaming platforms. It's called uh, Go Home Revenant, and uh, we, we recorded that. I think we did we release that later last year. Last year we released that, and I'm extremely oh, proud of the work that we did on that. It's a brilliant, brilliant album, if I say so myself. Yeah, yeah. So this is sort of like fairly recent. The uh, the band before you joined in Spiral Carpets. Or... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So those guys, the the, the frontman and singer Niall, is yeah. uh, again is another old friend of mine from high school. And again, we kept in touch. We kept bumping into each other at rehearsal studios. Like, oh, it's you. You're in that band and you're in this band. Actually, at that particular circus gig that we mentioned earlier, he was in the support band as well. Funnily enough, strange full circles. But then a few years later, he said, how do you fancy forming a little bit of a band, you know, between us? Like, yeah, let's do that. So we, uh, we sort of sent it around Salford Uni because the, the keyboard yeah. player back, he had a, a position there. So we were able to use the rehearsal rooms and we wrote an album while we were there, recorded it at Salford Uni. And then lockdown happened, you know, a lot of things got sort of shelved. And then after that, we yeah. was like, well, let's, let's get this album finished and let's get it out there. So last year we finally got it done, but it's out there and we're currently working on some new material. Oh, wow. Well. well, I think what it is with Discogs is if someone if, if it has if it doesn't get so like entered because especially if it's a new like a new album or something someone has to enter it on there before anyone can actually find it i think with discogs as well it centers more around physical media and if a band hasn't produced something physical like a cd or a vinyl then discogs generally doesn't pick up on it yeah yeah that oh that is true so yours was more on uh like Spotify? On, straight onto streaming because obviously you know there's quite a heavy financial outlay for print you know pressing vinyl and you know getting cds done and all the rest of it and it, you don't always know if you're going to sell them do you so usually we just go for quite a lot of my things we just go straight to the streaming services get it out that oh, way and if it has interest then we'd look at doing physical pressings oh i see so you're still so like uh in hollow child and Absolutely. hopefully next year you're going to be releasing another album but a couple of things that uh, me and niall have done in this room yeah. in my home studio so far we did it not long ago and they sound very interesting oh good that's well, something to look forward to then so like um but again it's going to be in streaming so like platforms for the time being so we, we might do some vinyl if, if there's enough demand to merit doing vinyl i'd love yeah, to get some yeah. vinyl. let's do that 
Oh, brilliant. Well, okay, I'm next sure. one. <laughs> well, next one is uplift. Mm -hmm. Now, this is really weird because, again, when when I, when I looked on Discogs for it, because there's, <laughs> there's a group called Lift Up, which yeah. is like an 80s Euro disc. That was not us. <laughs> that was definitely not Uplift, let me tell you that. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they were. So that was 2007. So I'd have been 17, just going on 18 when I was in those guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, It was kind of like prog, like alternative prog in a way. You know? Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, don't yeah. Know if I, I don't know if I've got any of the songs still saved, but I was only in them for about a year, roughly, I'd say. But yeah, that, that was quite formative because a lot of the connections that I made while I was in that band have ended up leading on to leading on to leading on, and then we're here now. So I don't wow. regret my time with them, but yeah, that, that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. So you have been really busy from Slythe, the very first band, yeah, up to now. You I didn't stop them. playing drums. Well, I, I, there was a, obviously just before lockdown and then during lockdown, I down tools. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've not played for a, a couple of years, and you know, I, I was kind of ready to just leave it there, if I'm honest. Yeah. But then it, the thing that reignited it all was. Uh, getting the call from Stephen about the Inspirals thing. But yeah. up, up until that point, up until lockdown, I'd been very, very consistent of just making sure that I stay in bands. And then I got to doing as many bands as I possibly could just to like, to make sure that I was match fit, that, you know, I could handle situations yeah. and yeah. just keep playing. I love playing. Well, before I ask you about uh, Stephen Hall um, and also the band that, you know, led you to Inspiral Carpets, because you were also in the rankings as well. I was in the rankings, yeah. And, yeah. Are there any other bands that you want to sort of, like, tell us? I couldn't find that. I didn't see on the, shall I the list. <laughs> look at the list, shall I? Oh, my days. <laughs> There's a hell of a lot of them on here. Brace yourself. We're going in deep. <laughs> oh my days right let's see which ones are notable mentions there was a band called syndicate that i was in when i was 17 they were a metal band really really enjoyed those guys i still speak to eddie and chris from those there's a there's a youtube video of us playing at urbis in 2007 okay. search up syndicate one man does that's me on drums with my extremely long hair check that one oh out. my god <laughs> were you is that um the same bill as keith keith yeah, there's a band called Keith, and um, I think that there's a, I went to a gig at Urbis when they have like an opening something, so it's not that one. No, it wasn't that. It was, a, I think it was actually a battle of the bands that day. Oh, I see. I mean, you can see from the crowd reaction, we won. <laughs> it was brilliant. But yeah, I've got to give a shout out to those boys, without a doubt. Uh, there was also, uh, <laughs> there's a band called The Sausage Band. <laughs> The sausage one. The sausage band, of course. Of course, it'd be called the sausage band. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. That that was with uh, that was Mark who does all of the the mosaics around Manchester that you see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it was Mark. It's top, was, it, in the Strawberry Studios mosaic in stop uh, in stop. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. all around Netflix Palace and all that kind of stuff. So it was him that did that, and he was the the singer and songwriter. That I went and did a bit of playing for them. That was a bit of fun. Oh. Uh, yeah, there was all sorts. There was, uh, oh, even uh, Gareth Ike. I played for Gareth Ike for a while. I don't know if many people remember that, who's the son of the very esteemed David Ike. David Ike? Oh, great. Yeah, I did a while with him. This, I'm in some music videos knocking around if they're still around. Yeah, I, I, had, I had some interesting times playing for him. Yeah. Very interesting times, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, there's, there's too many to mention on here. Is it? <laughs> But these are all like Manchester bands. They're all like uh, they're all Manchester. Although, to be fair, Gareth was based in Derby, so that made rehearsals oh. a little bit awkward because I'd have to be like getting my cymbals and my snare, getting on two trains to get down to Derby. It wasn't easy, but yeah, the yeah. most of the century around Manchester is just easier to get to, isn't it? Yeah, and Manchester is just amazing. I mean, that's why I really love this city. It's just all these amazing musicians. They're everywhere. <laughs> There's a hell of a lot going on. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to talk about the rankings. Okay. Because um, I know that uh, John Rowland is the drummer of the rankings. Yeah. 
and I think they did um, a gig not so long ago. Yep. Um, so when did you become the drummer of the Rain Kings? 2016. 2016. Okay, so, that's, so what happened to John Rowland then? Why was he not in the band? I don't want to be misquoted on this one, but I, I think his back wasn't quite... There was something wrong with his back, if I remember rightly. I don't know, but you know. I think that's what it was, and he, they wanted to reform, and he, he just wasn't physically able to do it at that time. Oh, so see, yeah. It's yeah. Um, Kathy, who's the bass player in the Rangers. Yeah. She's also yeah. the bass player in Dubsex. Yeah. So yeah. the link there. So they, they thought we need a drummer. Who do we get? And Kathy very kindly recommended me, and I came in and played for them. But I think, you know, I think uh, the original drummer he's, he's doing okay now, clearly, because he, he's back playing, and all power to him. So he should. Yeah, yeah, he's lovely. I love John Rowland. I met him as well. So uh, oh, he came to King B, King B Records in Charlton. So that's really right. nice. Uh, right. Very nice. Him and his wife. So it's like, um, so that's where you met Stephen Holt. Um, roughly, I think it was that. I think we also we did some shows. Dub Sex did some shows supporting In Spirals as well. I think a bit before that, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd, have, I'd have met the boys then. And uh, yeah, I think it was that after that, yeah, I got into the rankings, yeah. It's just, it's just amazing that all these connections that you've been, you know, like recommended by a member of a band, so you got involved into another band, and then from that band, you got involved into another band. There's a big chain through all of these things, you know, there's a huge thread through everything, but I'm just, I'm thankful that I do get recommended, you know, that people do think of me, you know, that's, that's really <laughs> Do you remember this Rock Family of Trees? The, oh, do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. Well, it's all like you know. They should one. They should do one about you. Yeah, it's all like all the. I will have loads of. We'll have over thirty branches. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, that's how you got into in spiral carpets. And Essentially, yeah. It wasn't a direct link, obviously, because that was. I stopped playing in the rankings in September 2016. And then obviously it wasn't long after that. I think it was November 2016 that unfortunately Craig passed away. Yeah, yeah. And I assumed, and I found out that the band also assumed at that time that they weldn't going to carry on after that, you know. And it would have made sense for them to, to say, you know what, let's call it a day. You know, he's an integral member, Craig, wasn't he? Yeah. So the, I never thought that those guys had ever resurfaced personally, but yeah, it was uh, much later down the line. I kept in touch with Stephen and obviously kept in touch with Kathy. You know, we we, uh, we were at a party, uh, I think a couple of summers ago as well, having a bit of a catch up and whatnot. And then, uh, yeah, it, it just so happened that Stephen got in touch. And I, I thought when he got in touch with me, I thought, oh, the Rain Kings are going back out. You know, he wants to do some more Rain Kings shows. That'll be great. I've not played for a while, so yeah, you know, that'll be brilliant. But yeah, it turned out to be the other job, <laughs> thankfully. Um, yeah, because I remember seeing them in 2015. There's the uh, gigantic indie all day at uh, the Academy, Manchester Academy. So yeah. Craig, you know, Craig was there. And I've got to, I, I mean, I've got to say that I really <laughs> love Craig, um, Craig Gill, because well. he's well, he amazing. Yeah, he's, uh, it still hurts, you know, that he's not here. And I believe you are friends with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we, we'd, had, uh, we'd had some drinks and, you know, it, it, yeah, it used to get a little bit silly sometimes with the drinks, but yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd see him out and about around Manchester, you know, if I was wandering through, he'd be doing his, his music tours and, you know, I'd always stop and have a bit of a chat and whatnot, have a catch up, so... Yeah, yeah, it's it's a real shame that situation. It really is. But I, I like to make sure that, you know, and I made it clear from the start of me joining in Spirals was that I, I don't want to be the guy that comes in and you know, like, you know, I'm the new guy, I'm the drummer now. I wanted to make sure that it was very, very clear to everyone that no, that I'm absolutely paying homage to Craig first and foremost. You know, it was my idea to put his name on the front of my kit. I asked the band and the family if that's okay. I wanted to make sure that it was very clear that. We're doing this for Craig, and I'm going to stick true to his parts, the way he played them, and that's how it should be. Yeah, yeah. I saw um, Rose, um, Craig's wife, recently at the um, Mars Army, She's um, Mars Army meet. Um, she's really lovely, and I said to her that you know we still sort of like miss Craig so much, and then I'm really glad that she took over Manchester Music tour, and yeah. that 
you know, yeah. like uh, she and her daughter actually doing it. Yeah. Because Craig just loved doing that thing. And then it, it's actually, <laughs> it's actually, uh, I used to go to Salford Lights Club every Saturday. All right. And I always, you know, I always saw, like, expected to see him there. And then when he left, you know, when he saw, like, left the planet it was so like i went there and you saw sort of, like expect to see his face your smiling face and everything so that, that's just, just a bit that yeah it's just just so sort of, like really sad but anyways i'm glad that you you're part of inspire carpet now but i think did you do the audition or was steven just said he's the right person to do this well it it, it, it wasn't sort of put forward to me as like a, an absolute technical audition, but we all know that with any band that you walk into a room with, regardless of whether it's officially stated as an audition or not, it is, you know, because <laughs> they're going to test you out and see what you're about. So they just they <laughs> invited me down to a rehearsal. That, that's how it was put to me. But I, I knew like, you know, obviously they're going to be sussing me out and seeing what I'm like. Um, so yeah, I went down to the first night of the rehearsal and, you know, the, there was a list of, I think, 10 songs the first night. So we went through those. We started with this is how it feels. So imagine the pressure. First off, the, band, <laughs> yeah. play the biggest hit back to them. Yeah, no pressure there, boys. No pressure. But yeah, we did that night. I did those 10 songs and, you know, we had a nice chat and all the rest of it. And then uh, as I get home, uh, I get a message saying, well, do you want to come back and do tomorrow night as well? I was like, all oh, right, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that a go. So we did another different set of 10 songs, went through those and then, yeah, they had done something right, and they, they said, "Yeah, we're, we're quite happy to uh, to move forward." And here's some of the tour dates. Amazing, brilliant. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> but you already know the songs, anyways, because were the you a fan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew them from childhood. <laughs> but um, I've got to sort of like say this: in Spiral Carpets, you're not a session drummer. You are the drummer of Inspiral Carpets now. And Oscar Boone is the bass player now. Yeah, technically, I am still a session guy, technically. But, I'm, I'm for, you know, hopefully for the foreseeable, for as long as those guys want me to be the drummer in Inspiral Carpets, I will be the drummer in Inspiral Carpets. We all get, get on fantastically well. It's an amazing time yeah. that we have on tour. I love it. And, you know, they're quite happy to have me around, then I'll stick around. Any plans of sort of like doing new material, like recording and a new album? Because that would mean that you're going to be part of it. Yeah. So if it gets put on Discogs, then your name will be there. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm already on Wikipedia. Oh, that's enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, that this talks, you know, this, this talks going on and, you know, there's the, things that we're looking at. But I mean, part of it is just making sure that we've got the right time to do it. You know, and it's 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 not an easy process writing an album, is it? There's a lot of rehearsal that goes into it, a lot of prep and all the rest of it. So, yeah, yeah we'll, uh, we'll, we'll probably do something eventually. But yeah, just just keep your eyes peeled and see what happens. Yeah, and you're touring as well, because at the moment you're you know you're sort of like a, a rest period, yeah, but you're going to be touring. Um, so we're back out next weekend. Uh, we're doing Saturday and Sunday, so we're playing Bedford. I think it's the Summer Sessions Festival or an extension of that. Uh, yeah. So we're playing Bedford with uh, Johnny Marr and James have got like a full orchestra with them. So that's going to be great. And then we do the same wow. thing again with the same artists uh, the day after at Livham Festival. And then we've got yeah. towards the end of July, we've got some more dates. I think we're playing in Carlisle, uh, Home Firth Picture Drome. We're playing at the the Peak Cavern, the Devil's Ass in Castleton. Yeah, <laughs> which I can't I'd love to go. Yeah, I'd love to go there. I've seen photos. Here. It looks amazing. Well, I went there in year nine on a school geography trip. So <laughs> it's oh going to be really weird playing it. That'll be great. So now you're going back to play. <laughs> what a weird turn of not, not a school trip. <laughs> oh no, thankfully not. Um, well, of all the bands that you were in, I mean, I know Dub Sags and Oscar's Drum and Chameleon's Box and the Rain Case. You know, they all have like big following and stuff. But Inspire Cop is this is like the sort of like massive band, huge, that, huge. yeah, that you were in. So yeah. what's it like? And then you mentioned, you know, you're going to be playing with Johnny Marr and uh, um, 
um, the charlatans as well. Yeah. So what's what's it like for you? <laughs> um, the only word that really comes to mind is surreal. It really is surreal because, you know, like I say, the, these guys were played in the house. My mum was a huge fan. They were played in the house growing up. My mum had live DVDs of them. Like the, I think it was the 2003 when they played, played at Brixton. Mum used to play that DVD all the time. And I'd sit and watch it. It is surreal, but at the same time, you know, because I've been in the band for a little bit now and you obviously get to know everybody, at the same time, they're just my friends now. Well, they feel a bit more like family, to be fair. It's like one big family. So yeah. it's this weird juxtaposition of, oh, these are my mates that we have a top laugh with, you know, and we go around the world, essentially. But at the same time, it's like, oh, they're still doing spiral carpets, you know, <laughs> and all the other people yeah. that come with that, all the, you know, the other people, the fantastic people you get to meet along the way. It's just surreal. Yeah. I, I love it, and I, I thank them. I thank them as much as possibly can, as often as I can, for the opportunity to do it. Do you get starstruck? Not really, no. Except for one instance very recently. Generally speaking, I can really, really appreciate a certain artist and the, what they've added to the overall, you know, art of music. I can be yeah. absolutely impressed by that. And it's, it's more the work that that person produces that makes me starstruck than the individual themselves. So, you know, I don't mind meeting pretty much anybody, really, and just having a, a casual chat with them. But then there was very recently, there's a band that I might be a tiny bit obsessed with. They're called Carnival, <laughs> and they're from Australia. Oh, my days. I love their music. Well, they came over, didn't they, a couple of weeks ago, and they played yeah. in Milton Keynes. So I went to that, and then they played the next night in Brighton. So I booked hotels, went down the next night, went to watch them in Brighton. After the gig, me and my mate Adam, we were just having a drink in the bar opposite the venue. And one by one, all of the band came out just to have a drink with like whoever was still around. That's that's probably the only time in my life that I've actually become what you call a fangirl. I was like, oh my yeah. God, that's Drew. Oh, there's Steve. Oh my God, there's John. It, it, yeah, <laughs> I was an absolute mess. I'm not proud. I'm not proud, but it happened. <laughs> Did you have photos? Did you ask for photos? Oh, I got photos with them all, like an absolute <laughs> noob. And I, I woke up the next day. I mean, it's already bad enough waking up with a terrible hangover. But then you wake up and you go, oh, I actually asked for pictures with all of them. And I was asking them about time signatures in songs. What was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> but oh, well, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, well, well I think that's really good because, you know. <laughs> Because I'm going to be having nightmares about it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Although it reminds me, because um, the bass player, I can't remember his name now, but the bass player of um, the Seahorses, right. apparently um, John Squire told him that because he's in a band, especially with the Seahorses, he can't sort of like act like he's a fan. And, because, okay. you know, you're... What, look, so he you, was a fan of John. Yeah, well, well, what, uh, he's the bass. Right. Yeah, he's the bass player of the Sea Horses, so he he's supposed to be like, oh, you know, this sort uh, like. Uh, I, I, the, think that's all down, I think that's down to John's sort of mentality, really. Isn't it? I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, John's a phenomenal player, and I'll, I'll never yeah. take that away from him. But I think that's more down to John individually. Like, if if you're in a band, it means you love music. If you love music, then there's going to be artists that are at the absolute top of your list that you absolutely adore and you will have done for a long time. So it's difficult to just be like, oh, yeah, because I'm in a band, I can't show any sort of adoration for another musician. That's silly. That's silly. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I mean, it's great that you did that with your favourite band. <laughs> I don't remember that night as much as I do. But have you actually posted it on social media? So I'm with I the band. <laughs> I did. I did. Do you know what? I, I think part of that was to sort of take ownership of my shame. <laughs> That's why I put that out. Like, if I went and got these five pictures and did these guys heading all night drinking with them, I might as well own up to it and put it out there. So I did. it's on Twitter, <laughs> it's on Instagram, it's on Facebook, yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, that's what I do all the time. I really love so, like having photos with the band. I mean, the next time I go and see in Spiral Carpets, I'm going to ask for a photograph with you. Let's do it. And I hope you don't mind. Let's do it. Not a problem. <laughs> well, I've got a message from um, someone called Nell. Nell Boxall. Yeah, old friend of mine. 
Right. So um, Nell said, so buzzing for Kev being professional drummer for Inspiral Carpets. Uh, we used to work together in a grungy little music room in a tiny youth center in Burnage. Yes, we um, did. It cringed at me bashing the drums with all I've got. I'm actually starting to learn drums again soon. So watch out, Kevin. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I used to work with a, uh, what that have been before lockdown, I think it was. Oh, yeah, right. I, used do, uh, I used to work part time, um, just doing it was essentially youth work, but it was at a it was at Burnage Community Centre, so yeah, it, you know, the heart of where Liam and Noel grew up, um, and we, they had a little music room in the back of there. So naturally, I'd be trying to teach the kids to play Wonderwall because you know you're in the right place to learn Wonderwall, aren't you? But they had a little drum kit as well, so I try and get everybody playing that. And yeah, Nell used to come in have a little bit of a bash on them and, you know, have a go. But if she's learning drugs, she might steal my job. <laughs> See, so <laughs> you're actually the teacher. Yeah. So, so this was the recent one and not, do you know the, <laughs> the way I understood this? We saw, like, I should have sort of like seen that it's working together because I thought you were, both of you were like huge at the time and then you oh, went. No, no, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was teaching the kids to play all sorts of songs, you know, from, from, Lil Nas X or whatever was out at the time. I teach them how to play yeah, yeah. piano or whatever, or you know, teach them any form of drums, guitar. Yeah, it was great. I had a load of fun doing that. Oh wow! Well. well, good luck to Nell, Nell Boxel, because oh. uh, you know, once he's in the band, then uh, probably get him on us the drummer as well. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, good luck. Good luck to Nell. Us one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well. So together with Oscar Boone, because Oscar Boone is now the Not bass really. player as well, you must they must have so like got much so like younger. You know, Not they've so like gained a young, like a younger following. I mean, you know, you they've had so sort of, like the, the older generation, like myself and the others, your yeah. parents. But yeah. the younger ones because of you and, and Oscar. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's because of me and Oscar that our younger generation have come to watch the band. You know, I, I wouldn't consider, well, maybe he is, but I wouldn't consider myself as the eye candy of the band. You know, I don't, oh. I don't think we're having that kind of draw. I think oh. it's, it's the legacy of the songs, you know, so it's, like I said, it was played when I was growing up. Those songs are still played by, you know, thousands and thousands of people. So I think it's natural yeah. that you know, when a song is that good and it's part of the tapestry that it's going to keep being played in houses. So the younger generation are going to still hear it. And we see it at shows. So you get everyone, everyone from the usual crowd of the people that were there back in the day for the original gigs, who, you know, they come and tell us, oh, I was at this gig, you know, I was at the G-Max, G-Max, et cetera. But then you'll see, you know, people that are in my age, people in the thirties, you'll see twenties, you'll see groups of teenage lads that are all, you know, ranting and raving. But then you sometimes see kids like actual kids that are at the barrier, full of the merch, and they're singing every word to every song. And it, it baffles me how that's possible, but clearly the songs are good enough to merit that. Yeah, well, the other side of that coin is, have you ever experienced anyone from, say, the younger, uh, the older, so like old members of the audience, uh, telling you about Craig and that, you know, it's not going to be the same without... Craig Gill, have you ever had that experience? Thankfully, and I, I, I don't quite know why, but this far, there's not been a single negative comment towards me playing in the Inspirals. I've not a single, nothing online, nobody in person, anything like that. Everybody's just been super, super supportive. And the, the, the general feedback that I get online is that we think you're doing a great job and, you know, you're... Yeah. You're doing a great version of what Craig was doing. And that, that's that's incredible. That blows me away because I was fully ready for... I mean, I, I'm a fan of bands. I know how it goes, you know, especially if it's a band that you love. If there's a new member that comes in, you're always a bit like, who's this? Who's yeah. This? Who's, who's this? And I'd be the same. You know, I'd, I'd be exactly the same. I did it recently with the Foo Fighters. What, what's this Josh think he's doing? But <laughs> thankfully, they've all been extremely accepting. They've been extremely supportive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's blown me away. It really has blown me away because I, I was expecting something, you know, by way of, you know, get rid of this clown. But no, hats off to the fans for that one. Incredible. Yeah. Record. Well, didn't you have like Craig's son to yeah. do 
yeah, yeah. some coming bits as well. So that was at the Manchester, the Albert Hall show last April, April the 1st it was. Yeah. Um, so we'd done up to the encore, finished dragging me down, we go off for a minute, and then we, we usually start the sampler for uh, commercial rain, and then slowly we'd come back on stage. Well, what we did for this gig in particular, we'd have yeah. Levon, Levon Gill rehearsing with us prior, and we kept it really quiet, kept it secret, and Levon walks out, gets behind the drums, and he plays commercial rain, the first song of the encore, Incredible. I mean, what what an ode right. to his dad, you know. What an incredible tribute to his dad and the response yeah. to the crowd. I've never heard a noise like it. And it that all must, that yeah. deserved that night. That must have been quite emotional as well. Massively. I, I mean, for yeah. that song, because I knew I wasn't going to be on stage. I ran round and I got into the you know the guest bit on the balcony. I just watched the gig and like was blown away. Like wow, you could feel it in the air that night. Gosh, um, you've recently been to Australia. Yeah. Okay. What's the reaction there? What what's so like is it the same as home? Is it the same as in the UK? It's it's very similar, yeah, in a lot yeah. of ways. The crowd are great, they're up for a laugh, you know, they're big fans of the tunes. Yeah, they, they were brilliant, yeah. Australia and we did New Zealand as well. We did Auckland New and Zealand, yeah. in New Zealand. Yeah, great bunch of people. Did, up you there. To, did you go to Japan? We didn't. We didn't, I would have loved to on that run because it would have made sense there, but you know, already that side of the world. But no, we didn't. Maybe something in the future, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, now that you're back together, I mean, well, now that Inspire Carp is back together and you and Oscar, so yeah. like doing, you know, I, mean, I just, I just think it, it's nice to have some new, younger members. <laughs> I'm not saying that they're old, but. <laughs> the other members are still doing great, though, you know? They're still doing yeah. great. <laughs> well, I really hope there'll be um, new material, and you know, when when you're maybe done with the touring bit, that maybe you can go to a recording studio and uh, do that'd some. Nice. Yeah, that that would be really nice. Yeah. Um, so, I would ask you know about um, this thirty minute to set. <laughs> No, not 30 minutes, sorry. <laughs> That's too long. 30 seconds was enough. Never mind 30 minutes. Sorry. It's 30 second drum roll challenge. That's so because you're waiting for the tour to start. So you've got time yeah. at the moment to do this challenge. Yeah. So it wasn't you who originated this 30 second drum roll challenge. No. No, so. that credit goes entirely to Ted, who's in a band called The Height, who are Salford lads. Ted's a great drummer. I mean, I think he's 18. And for an 18-year-old, like, the stuff he can play is unbelievable. Like, he's, he's, he's just great. But he'd, uh, yeah. he'd come up with this thing. I saw it come up because I follow The Height. I saw it come up. It was him in a rehearsal room. And he challenged another drummer from a band called Revivalry, another great band. Uh, I think they're from sort of Cleethorpe's way. Another great band. But he challenged the drummer, Lewis, out of that. Yeah. And then I saw that come up as well. I was like, oh, well, I know Lewis as well. So I was like, oh, go on. You know, I was tweeting, go on, Lewis. Go on, you go and do it. Well, then the next day I get a notification and it's come through to me. Lewis has challenged me in his video. <laughs> I was like, oh, right. Brilliant. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? Actually, let's get let, let, let's get involved here. Let's do something. Because I didn't, before that, I, you know, I'd post videos of what Inspirals were doing, you know, roughly. But I, I didn't. I didn't really do anything that's like me orientated because to, yeah. to tell you the truth, I'm not really that kind of guy, you know, I'm doing these silly little videos here and there. Just, it's a bit of fun really, isn't it? You know, nothing serious, just a bit of fun. So I thought, yeah, yeah well, I'll get involved, you know, let, let's do this. I challenged a few of my friends. They've gone on, you know, challenged a few of theirs and yeah, it's doing the rounds. I've just done a second one as well. There's a second oh. drum challenge that's just gone out. So we're waiting for some responses yeah. back off that one. So yeah, it's, it's great fun. Yeah, because you've become the face of this uh, drum challenge. But weirdly, yeah. But like I say, it's, it's not my idea. But you know, it, but what I'm doing with that because I've recognised that you know that I'm getting a lot of attention for it. I, I want to divert that attention to the other guys that are, that are doing it, and like to the other bands, like the younger bands. Let's use that attention to look at those guys. You know, so go go and follow the hype. Go and follow Revivalry and Ricari and everybody else that's involved. You know, Joel did it from Seb Low. Go and check these guys out. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had to, like the 
some of the more mature ones, like from other bands. So is, are you sort of like challenging just the younger drummers? Well, I, I did a bit of a mix um, initially. And then the second one, I don't think I challenged anyone directly. I'm just trying to mix it up a little bit, you know, so I'm all about supporting younger bands, younger artists, so just people that are new to the business in general. If I can shine a light on those people and give them an opportunity, then I'll yeah. do that, you know, because I had similar things when I was 14, 15, 16. There was, you know, some musicians that, you know, were great and helpful to me and were very open to helping out. So I think I should be doing the same, really. But yeah. I've, I've been a... Uh, <laughs> I, in fact, I won't name names, but I've been speaking to a couple of drummer friends who were a little bit more established recently. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can get them doing some kind of drum challenge. Let's take it up that direction as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think it'll be, it's just great that you become so like, you know, even though it wasn't you who originated it, who started this drum roll challenge. Um, but you become, you know, you become so like the one that's actually promoting all these, uh, all these things. I saw it on Twitter. Right. Yeah. I thought, oh, this is really good. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw it on Facebook as well because yeah. you were into you were interviewed on um, like someone's podcast about on, it. Yeah, the Dougie Stone Radio Show. Yeah. Stone, yeah. 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 Be on to have a chat with it, but then with that, you know, because it invited me on to speak about it. But like I say, my, kind of my purpose behind that is. I don't want it to be just about me. You know, it's not even my idea to start with. I've just joined in. So I said, yeah. well, I'll come on, but only if I can get all the other lads that joined in. Only if they can yeah. come on with me, you know, so they can promote their bands and their gigs and all the rest of it. So we did that yeah. last week. Yeah. How many have done it already? Oh, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> about eight or nine or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Because it's a it... recent thing, isn't it? It was fairly yeah. new. Yeah. yeah. It's a couple of weeks old, yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Especially if you get the, uh, well, you're right and say established one, not much. I said mature, but. <laughs> yeah, mature is not a term to use for drummers, Anna. Yeah. The established <laughs> one. <laughs> well, it's now three o'clock. Well, I've got this four um, questions that I always ask the guests. Um, first one is, um, well, good luck to that drum roll challenge anyway. So, um, yeah, that sounds really, really good. So the first one is, do you twirl when you play the drums? I don't think I saw you twirl at Shine On. No. No? Is that no. not... <laughs> so that's the opposite of what I'm about. Like, I'm quite happy to go up there, play the songs, get the job done. It's about playing, you know, playing what the tune needs. That's what it's about. If you're there yeah. twirling your sticks, I mean, don't get me wrong, I can do it, because when I was, you know, 16-year-old kid... Of course, you're going to learn how to do those things. But if I saw that at a gig, if I saw a drummer stood there twirling his sticks, I think, come on. <laughs> no. You watch. I'll do it this weekend now. Now you've said it, just for the sake of it, I'm going to twirl my sticks this weekend. You watch. <laughs> Clem Burke. I mean, Clem Burke's amazing doing you know, when he's twirling his sticks. Yeah, but he's Clem Burke. He's a <laughs> Clem Burke can do whatever he wants, in my opinion. He's incredible. <laughs> I'm not Clem Burke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sort of like uh, see if there's any footage of you twirling sticks while you're playing oh, in his you know I bet there is somewhere now, and I'm going to look like a right spanner. <laughs> Belter. I hope not. <laughs> well, the next question is um, drumming heroes. Do you have any drumming heroes? I have a long, long list of drumming heroes. Um, well, I suppose that, the, you know, trying to go in a bit of a chronological order here, it'd be Rennie, first and foremost. You know, like I said, I was played his music before I was even born. I would kick along to it. My dad said when I was a little, little kid, uh, he used to put, he put the second coming on, and I think it's in Daybreak, halfway through the song Daybreak, there's the bit where everybody drops out and there's a drum break from Rennie. And my dad said every time that came on, I, you know, I'd be sort of messing with my toys as a kid, and I'd always just like turn around and look when that drum came, drum break came on. So there was clearly something going on there that's piqued my interest. Yeah. Um, another one, Steve White. Steve White, absolute huge, huge influence. You know, he he was with Paul Welly, he was in the Style Council. You know, he's played for Oasis. He's been in the Who briefly. Yeah. And he's a phenomenal. He's a clinician. He's a drum clinician. 
and I've been to his clinics and I've learned so much from him over the years. And, you know, I'm very, very thankful to say that we've become kind of friends now. You know, we drop each other a text now and again. And what an incredible guy and an incredibly encouraging person to know. Yeah. Have and you met Renny? The other big ones, Steve Judd. Kind of oh, who, yeah, okay. Obviously. <clears throat> and Tony Royster Jr. Unbelievable people. Yeah. You might not know of him, but yeah, he's, wow. Wow. Um, have you met Rennie? I've not met Rennie. No. I, I, you know, we were talking about the starstruck thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I might go a little bit quiet. I wouldn't be over the top. I think I might go a little bit quiet in the presence of Rennie because that's that's a different league of person. That. Yeah. I don't think anyone knows where he is. It seems like he's disappeared. <laughs> It, it, it'll be it'll be hiding away somewhere comfortable, and I, I understand why you might do that. You know, the limelight yeah. is not always as pleasant as people think it is. <laughs> it's not like when when people ask who will be your ultimate, so like as the drum and gas, I always saw sort of like say Rennie because I don't know where he is. So. Well, if you can find him, let us all know. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you talk to drummers, do you do? When, I mean, obviously, you saw like when you know when you have not just uh, inspired carpets, but other b bands as well. Do you do drum talk with other drummers? I try not to, but <laughs> oh, it's, <laughs> it's inevitable because it, it's like they speak your language. They they get your instrument. They they get what it's all about. So it's inevitable to eventually be like you know talking about this drum part or what do you think of this drummer or have you heard the, have you heard the sound of the kit on this album or have you heard this guy's snare or you know recently when I was chatting to Carnival, I was asking the guys what time signature this song was and what's the time signature for that song like and I think it's in this is it in that Just making an absolute fool of myself but you know let's embrace that let's not be ashamed of that you know we're all drummers yeah. let's embrace that kind of a conversation you know we should be it should be a brotherhood yeah yeah. Well, Lord Tolhurst from The Cure, cool, he once said that all drummers are friends. Would you agree to that one? <laughs> I, I've, funnily enough now you say that, yeah, they, they, I don't think there's ever been a case of where I've met another drummer at a gig and we haven't got on. There's just something about drummers where you all just, you're all mad. <laughs> so you all get on. <laughs> <laughs> well, playing in the different bands, uh, and you've played so, like, practically from when you were a teenager. Yeah. to now so uh, any drumming disasters or accidents that you can remember <laughs> so i did i remember once during the intro song i don't even think it was the first song it was during this little intro bit that we wrote this was in uh i think it was in uplift at this point so i'd have been 17 and uh, yeah. during the intro i broke the snare drum head it just ripped and I didn't have a spare snare, so I was like, right, that's that's great. I'm just going to have to do the rest of the gig hitting a floppy piece of plastic. So that, that wasn't great. But then there was another one that was, uh, I mentioned it the other day. Um, I think I was 16, and we played at the Retro Bar in Manchester, which if anyone's oh, been there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I've been there, yeah. As a 16-year-old, I'd, I'd had a couple of sneaky Jack Daniels and Cokes before going on, maybe more than a couple, because I was rock and roll, you know. I was in I was in syndicate. I was in a metal band at the time. I was dead rock and roll, so I'd had a yeah. few of those. It goes on to play these quite difficult songs. It's a metal band, and as I'm playing it, my drum stool, one of the legs snaps. Now they've only oh, got no. three, so when well, <laughs> one of them goes, you're off. So I, I have to spend the entire gig sort of with my left foot holding me up off the floor <laughs> whilst being clearly too drunk for a 16 year old to be at a gig. <laughs> And then playing these metal songs and that one i still have some nightmares about that night <laughs> that's you know, yeah that was i thought retro bar is new oh, no. i thought it was a new place i didn't realize that it's been going for years i mean it might have been done up i've not been in there for years but no that, i was playing there when i was a teenager yeah with the sticky floor yeah <laughs> okay Gosh, but you've never had one that's sort of like fairly recent and the uh, um uh, no, no. I mean, let's, you know touch wood and every other touch wood yeah thing. yeah <laughs> had any like major major issues or anything like that in 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 years years and years oh i just remember there was one time where me i was playing at a uh at Duckingfield Town Hall as a, as a teenager again and the, the tom fell off the kit and it took the symbols out half the kit fell apart 
I had that one. But yeah, not since I was a teenager have I had anything like that. And it's probably down to the fact that we've got an amazing crew within Spirals. So <laughs> Spirals Tour, thankfully, has been flawless. Yeah. So you don't do any of the uh, dismantling the kit and things like that. So you've got... Thankfully, <laughs> thanks to Lee. Thanks to yeah. Lee. And, and, well, everybody chips in. Lee, Liam, Snidge. Snidge usually sets up the kit for me. Everybody gets involved. But yeah, they're a fantastic crew lovely yeah. lovely people and they do an amazing job so yeah I'm, I'm really thankful to them for that yeah well the one thing that's so like always so like you know when i think of inspired carp it's that no gallagher used to be the roadie well, the day, <laughs> yeah, it would have actually been because he was craig's drum tech back in the day so you know if, if, if the times were a little bit different i'd have had noel setting up my kit yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> Imagine that with so like having no Gallagher, so like uh, setting up your junket. Straight. Well, when we played with um, we, we played at a festival with him last year. I think it was Splendor Festival, and uh, <laughs> it would have been great if, it, you know, just for a one-off at, at that gig, if we could have got Noel to go on and just set up the drums. You know, like <laughs> back to the old days. Just say nothing. Just walk on like it's nothing, and just set up the drums for us for all time's sake. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been brilliant. But no, he wouldn't do that now. It was like way too big to be setting up drum kits. <laughs> I mean, if, if you write those songs, you do what you want, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, my last question for you is, what would be your advice to aspiring drummers out there? Like Nell, Nell Boxer, what would be your advice to, uh, to Nell? <laughs> my advice is... You, you have to you have to really get into what it is to be a drummer if you want to be a drummer you have to really get into it you know so there's things like you have to look at your timing you know if you if you can't keep a solid time if you can't play a solid four four standard beat bang onto a click that's going to be that's going to be your money earner you know that, that that's where you, you get paid it's great doing all the fast stuff doing all the big drum fills and you know twirling your sticks that's great you know it looks great on instagram Woo! <laughs> yeah <laughs> Can you turn up to a gig and play a solid beat where you keep everybody in time and it feels good and the crowd can dance to it instead of falling over? That's what it's about. And get get to grips with the basics. Learn what drum rudiments are. What's a paradiddle? What's a six-stroke roll? Look, what are doubles? What are singles? Learn these things. Get them solid. That's the thing. And just listen. Listen to other drummers. Really, really listen to them. Listen to what they do in a song, how they control the energy and the flow through a song. That's what you need to be doing if you're going to become a drummer. That's that's brilliant. That's that actually, yeah, that's amazing. That's a very very good advice. Which sort of like I wanted to ask one more question is uh, in Inspiral Carpets, do they let you do your own style, or is it just sort of like you're doing the part that Craig Gill is sort of like doing? So I suppose. If I wanted to add little bits in here and there, and that there's, there's tiny little things that I do that might be slightly different to Craig, but it's only my new tiny little things here and there. Um, I think that the guys, as long as it didn't absolutely jack up the song, I think they, they'd be all right for that. But for me personally, it's, it's about representing what Craig did. So even if they said, you know, yeah, go crazy, do whatever you want, I'm yeah. still going to play exactly what was on the record because it's out of respect for Craig. With respect for the fans who've listened to those songs for years, they expect a certain sound. I want to give them that sound back, and that, yeah. that's, that's the crucial thing for me. But yeah, there's, there's a couple of bits like you know, I've, I've slightly changed the the outro bit to "She Comes in the Fall" because they, they've said now you know, <laughs> it was their idea. I must put it across. It was their idea. They said, "I want you to do like an, a little bit of a drum solo at the end of this song." I was like, "Okay, well, you know, no pressure there." But yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Over the time, and it, it's evolved over time, but. Yeah, other than that, I try and keep it pretty much to how it was on the record. Oh, that's that's brilliant. Well, thank you so much. I really hope there's going to be new material for Inspire Carpets with your drumming, you know, with your drumming and uh, Oscar's, Oscar's bass playing as well. Fantastic bass player. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kev. I'm really, really glad that you said yes to us, the drummer, and uh, I wish you all the best. So, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, I hope I get a photo with you. I'm sure you will. Well, if you don't at a gig, give me a message. We'll yeah, that. not not just saw like a tiny one, <laughs> like with the we'll with the members of the audience. Yeah, not just you in, in the background there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> in between you and Clem Boone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. And you. And, thank you very much. Yeah, hopefully see you soon. And yes. good luck with the tour as well. So um, thank you. Thank all right. You. See thank ya. You. Thanks, Ken. Bye. 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 Oh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us live. It is so lovely. <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, like I said, I mean, I really, I really love Craig Gill, and I was a big fan of Inspire. I still am. I'm a big fan of Inspire Carpet since I was in the Middle East because that's where I first heard "This is how it feels." You know, so, so it's it's it is so like very important to me that he said yes to um, ask the drummer. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to be back again at five o'clock uh, today and it's going to be an amazing drummer from Liverpool who's sort of like the um, father of uh, Tony McGuigan and the grandfather of Tony McGuigan. Both of them are on Acid Drummer. Uh, Tony was in 2022 and then Sonny was um, last year. So please do come back at five o'clock uh, today. I know it's midnight in uh, Manila, but if you know, if you're still awake, just do um, come back and uh, join us again on Master Drummer. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much to Kev Clark. And um, they're touring, Inspire Carpets are touring. Just keep an eye out on their, um, check out their um, Facebook page or Instagram or uh, Twitter, social media pages, and to find out where they are. So, like, going to be playing. Right. So, enjoy the rest. Of your weekend if you can't come back next later today so um and uh, as always love music love life love 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 drummers they're absolutely amazing people are so cool oh and do check out this 30 second not 30 minute but 30 second drum roll challenge on facebook twitter uh, I think yeah on Twitter and because uh, it's it's brilliant having you know seeing all these amazing drummers so like do this challenge so uh, yeah bye for now everyone so see you all again hopefully at five o'clock uh, bye for now bye.